Over a hundred years ago, when cowboys drove herds of cattle across the prairie on the way to market, they employed some very basic safety gear. A kerchief pulled over their nose and mouth acted as a simple yet effective air filter that kept them from choking on the dust kicked up from hundreds of hooves. Today, men and women explore space wearing sophisticated breathing apparatus that no cowboy ever dreamed of. Yet the principle behind this extraordinary technology remains the same, using human ingenuity to turn a potentially hostile environment into a safe place for human beings to work. Though the safety equipment you're required to wear in your workplace may be less elaborate than this, used properly, an air purifying respirator can help protect you from potential airborne hazards. In this program, we'll discuss respiratory hazards, how air purifying respirators work, choosing the right respirator, and proper use and maintenance. Each of us takes in approximately 20,000 breaths every day. As human beings, we rely on this steady supply of clean, oxygen-rich air to stay alive. Sometimes, however, employees must work in areas where the surrounding atmosphere may contain harmful substances. When a worker does not take precautions against these hazards, acute or chronic illnesses involving the respiratory and cardiovascular systems can develop. How widespread is the problem? According to the American Lung Association, in the United States, occupational lung disease is the number one work-related illness. Manufacturing activities like grinding, drilling, welding, smelting, and plating operations can send toxic particulates and gases into the surrounding air. Just as potentially harmful are environments that contain biological hazards. Healthcare workers can be exposed to infectious agents such as drug-resistant tuberculosis, while in agriculture, mold spores in grain and hay can lead to a debilitating illness known as farmer's lung. To understand why airborne hazards can have such an impact on your health, it helps to know something about how the respiratory system works. When you take a breath, the air that's drawn in through your nose and mouth passes down the windpipe or trachea to the lungs. From here, the passageways branch out into tubes called bronchioles. At the end of these tubes are the alveoli, tiny thin-walled sacs that allow oxygen in the air to pass into the bloodstream. When air is inhaled that contains toxic gases or tiny particles, these airborne hazards can travel down to the delicate tissues of the lungs, causing permanent damage and aggravating such breathing problems as asthma, bronchitis, and emphysema. The smallest particles, which are not visible to the eye, are often the most dangerous because it is easier for them to travel deep into the lungs. Fortunately, if you work in an environment where airborne hazards may be present, there is a way to protect yourself. At your workplace, steps have been taken to reduce or eliminate airborne hazards through engineering controls such as ventilation or through the use of alternate, less toxic materials. However, when these measures are unable to eliminate the hazard, you must wear a respirator to provide protection. How does a respirator work? The basic air purifying respirator includes a face piece or mask that's secured to the head with straps and a cartridge that contains an air purifying element. Each time the user inhales, air is pulled through the element and captured, purifying the air. A variation on the basic air purifying respirator is the powered air purifying respirator or PAPR. The PAPR uses a fan to blow clean air into the mask. This provides two advantages. Breathing is easier because the fan does the work of pulling air through the filter. Also, purified air fills the mask, creating a positive pressure that helps prevent toxins from leaking into the mask. Air purifying respirators are capable of eliminating many types of airborne toxins. 
but each respirator is specially designed to filter out particular toxins. To be effective, the type of respirator used must be matched to the hazard. With this in mind, air purifying respirators can be subdivided into three types, particulate, gas and vapor, and combination. Particulate filters are used when dusts, fibers, fumes, or mists are present. As the worker breathes in, contaminants become trapped in the filter and so do not enter the lungs. Gas and vapor removing respirators use an absorbing material to purify air. To work properly, the absorbing material must be carefully matched to the gas or vapor to be eliminated. As the name suggests, combination respirators use more than one type of filter at the same time to remove both particles and gas or vapor from the air. It is important to remember that there is one limitation that all air purifying respirators share. They do not increase or supply oxygen. Oxygen is just one of several gases that make up the air that surrounds us. If the oxygen content in the air we breathe drops below 19.5%, mental awareness and muscle coordination quickly deteriorate, creating a high-risk situation. As the exposure continues, unconsciousness and death can occur. If the atmosphere you will be working in is oxygen deficient, an air purifying respirator will not provide protection. An air supplying respirator that has an independent oxygen source must be used instead. As part of compliance with federal regulations, your site has developed a written respiratory protection program. When engineering controls cannot eliminate or control a respiratory hazard, a qualified person must select and approve a respirator that provides protection to workers at the site. Prior to being fitted for a respirator, each worker must receive a medical evaluation from a physician or other licensed healthcare professional. Because breathing through a respirator requires more effort than breathing in the open air, people with illnesses such as asthma or heart disease may not be able to wear a respirator. Employees who pass this medical screening are cleared to move on to the fit test. During this test, workers try on several masks and perform exercises that simulate movement in the workplace. As the worker performs these movements, a test agent is released nearby that is either irritating to the nasal passage or has a distinct odor or taste. If the worker cannot detect the test agent through the mask, then a good fit is assumed. The mask prevents unfiltered contaminated air from being breathed in. And if there are any gaps or leaks around the mask, the respirator cannot do its job effectively. For this reason, where the mask comes in contact with the skin, the seal must be tight. Eyeglasses, facial hair, including razor stubble or facial scars may also interfere with an airtight seal, allowing toxins to bypass the respirator. To make sure the respirator continues to provide adequate protection, a fit test must be performed once a year or after conditions such as facial scarring, dental changes, cosmetic surgery, or obvious changes in body weight occur. Prior to putting a respirator on, Always inspect the equipment thoroughly to make sure that it is in good condition. Look for signs of deterioration, including cracks, tears, or holes. Check the plastic threads on cartridges for stripping. Check the tightness of connections. Test that rubber and other elastomeric parts are still pliable. Confirm that shelf life dates on cartridges and filters are within proper limits. Above all, never use a respirator that is in poor or defective condition. Doing so can be more dangerous than wearing no respirator at all because it can lead to a false sense of security. If you discover any problems with your respirator, contact your supervisor immediately so it can be repaired or replaced. If repairs are needed, they can only be performed by a trained, qualified individual using components specified by the manufacturer. Each time you wear a respirator, it is important to perform a user seal check. The manufacturer's instructions for your respirator will provide specific information on whether you must perform a positive pressure check, a negative pressure check, or both to make sure that an adequate seal has been achieved. 
To perform a positive pressure check, close off the exhalation valve with the palm of the hand. Gently exhale into the face piece until positive pressure causes a slight bulging. Hold your breath and look for signs of outward air leakage. If you discover that the seal is not secure, adjust the mask and repeat the seal check until a good seal is achieved. To perform a negative seal check, close off the cartridge inlets with your hand or by replacing the filter seal. Inhale gently so that negative pressure causes the face piece to collapse slightly. Again, adjust the mask and repeat the procedure if you detect leakage. Remember, these user seal checks are a safety measure that must be performed whenever you use a respirator. They are not, however, a substitute for the yearly fit test. Whenever you use a respirator in a hazardous environment, be aware of any changes in the respirator's function. Filters and cartridges have a limited lifespan and must be replaced regularly. As contaminants collect on particulate filters, the filters become clogged, allowing less air to pass through. If breathing begins to require more effort while using a particulate filter, it usually indicates that it is time to replace the filter. Since gas and vapor cartridges rely on absorbents to do their job, once the absorbents are used up, they can no longer remove hazardous chemicals from the air. So gas or vapor cartridges must be replaced periodically. Some cartridges have an indicator that changes color when they need to be replaced. For cartridges that do not have this indicator, a qualified person must set up a schedule for changing cartridges before they become ineffective. To assure the proper protection, only use cartridges from the same company that makes your respirator. Never remain in a hazardous environment if you suspect your respirator is malfunctioning or not providing adequate protection. If you begin to taste or smell chemicals, or you experience resistance in breathing, leave the area as quickly as possible. Go to a clean, non-hazardous location to check your equipment for leaks or to replace filters and cartridges. To care for your respirator and keep it functioning properly, it is important to clean it regularly. For a respirator that you use exclusively, cleaning after each day's use helps ensure that contaminants that can penetrate the skin are removed. Respirators that are used by more than one worker must be cleaned and disinfected after each use. The proper procedure for cleaning your respirator can vary depending on the nature of the airborne hazard you are exposed to. Follow the cleaning procedure that is recommended in your facility's respiratory protection plan. When storing the respirator, place it in a sealable plastic bag and keep it away from vibration, heat, moisture, extreme cold, or damaging chemicals. To prevent the respirator from becoming distorted or misshapen, store it with the face piece and output valve in a normal upright position and avoid storing things on top of it. While properly using and caring for a respirator may take a little extra time and effort, it's a commitment that every employee who uses a respirator at this facility must make to safeguard their own health. To protect yourself, remember, use the correct filters and cartridges for the specific hazard you face. Inspect your respirator for damage or worn parts each time you put it on. Always check your mask before each use to see that it fits properly and forms an airtight seal. Leave a hazardous environment if you suspect your respirator is not working properly or requires maintenance. And finally, clean and store your respirator properly. If you have any questions about respirator use, care, or storage, ask your supervisor. Although air purifying respirators may not be as stylish as those cowboy kerchiefs, they are very effective at blocking airborne hazards from reaching your lungs. But to do their job, it is up to you to use them correctly.